This week we're going to be doing a pretty simple experiment in lab, but it's a very useful experiment because every time we use an acid or a base with a known concentration, somebody has to standardize that. So this week we are going to be standardizing our own acids and bases that we're going to be able to use in a few of the upcoming experiments. So first of all, let's look at what we've got on the bench. So I have my aqueous sodium hydroxide unknown that I'm going to be titrating. There's potassium hydrogen phthalate, the solid acid standard. There is a bottle of phenolphthalein indicator, waste beaker, and Erlenmeyer flask, ring stand, and the burette I'm going to use. That's all the equipment we're going to need for the first part of the experiment. So, let's get started on it. First of all, I want to get my burette put up. So, let's close the stopcock, make sure everything's tight. And this burette is probably clean, but you never know that for sure. So, I'm going to rinse this a little bit with the stock before I load it up. Alright, burette is rinsed, it's full, and I made sure to run all the bubbles out of the tip, so now we're ready to start our first titration. So, I need to weigh out some potassium hydrogen phthalate to do that. When I weighed this out, I got a little bit over the 400 milligrams that the manual says, and that's fine. I actually weighed out 421 milligrams, and all that really matters is that I know how much I used. So I can go ahead and use this 421 milligrams. Let me write that down before I forget it. All right, now, procedure says add about 30 milliliters of water. The actual volume really isn't important because I know how many grams of KHP I've put in there, so I know how many moles of potassium hydrogen phthalate are present. So I added some water to that, and you can see if you look a little bit closer, you can see that it didn't all quite dissolve yet. That's okay, because as we do the titration, as this reacts, it'll continue to dissolve. Most important step, don't forget to add the indicator. Phenolphthalein indicator is colorless in acidic solution, so even when I add a few drops of indicator, it's not going to change the color of the solution yet. So my indicator is in, 
My burette is loaded and ready to go. Now all I need to do is take the initial burette reading. Looks like it is 0.27 milliliters. So my initial is 0 0.27 milliliters. All right, now we're ready to Titrate. Let me move this a little bit closer to the edge. Remember, Erlenmeyer flasks are made this way or this shape because they're made to swirl. So that's why we tend to use them in titrations. When you're doing a titration, you can control the burette with one hand by reaching across the burette and swirl with the other hand and titrate to a color. So I'm swirling my flask as I start my titration. Now at the beginning I can add pretty fast because I know I've got quite a ways to go. But one thing you'll notice if I stop swirling it for a minute, the middle of the solution actually is turning pink as the titrant is being added. But if I give it a swirl, it all goes away. So every once in a while it's a good idea to stop, give it a swirl, make sure all the color is disappearing. But most of the time you can just keep right on rolling. Now it's taking a little bit longer for it to go away. So I'm going to slow down Try adding drop at a time, giving it a good swirl. I just stopped it. Everything turned pink, persistent endpoint. Tap that last drop off the side of the burette tip, and I'm at my endpoint. So now I can take my final reading. You can see I've got a persistent pink endpoint now in my solution. So I've reached the endpoint, I've reached the place where. I've added the same number of moles of sodium hydroxide as potassium hydrogen phthalate. So, let me slide this up a little bit to make it easier to take a final reading. Looks like 20.82 milliliters of my unknown acid. Well that's the first half of the experiment. The other half of the experiment is really the same thing. Instead of KHP you're going to be using an unknown hydrochloric acid solution, but it's just another titration. So let's dump that into our waste. I can give that same Erlenmeyer flask a good rinse with deionized water. And I'm all ready to go again. I'm going to do as many titrations as I need to do to convince myself that I've got a good answer, that I've got reliable results. And that's the entire experiment for this week. So one of the nice features of this experiment is 
The calculations and all the data workup are simple enough and quick enough and the experiment is quick enough that you'll be able to get everything finished and handed in before you leave. That means that you don't have to worry about any lab assignments over spring break. So there's the experiment. Make sure you read things over, take the quiz, and I'll see you all on Thursday.